Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I just reviewed the live action adaptation of Mulan that aired on Disney Plus, although I did tend to find the movie online because I don't have the streaming service and I'm not willing to pay that amount of money just to get it, including paying the premium access to see it and not willing to wait until December to watch it for free. I'm sorry, but. I, I just can't accept that. But I thought the movie was fantastic, at least. Uh, if you do follow my review. I mean, I, I did forgot to mention a few more stuff. But I didn't want to give away too much. But that's okay. Um, but I did love its funny moments that it has. I mean, with the Warriors that Mulan was teaming up with. That's run by Commander Tung. Um, yeah, including the... The, the river scene, you know, when they're just about to you know, take a bath, <laughs> all naked, um, where it has this one soldier who, I guess you could say, he's sort of uh, trying to find out how good she really is, you know, but of course he was trying to hide her body, you know, all naked because they didn't want to find out that she's a female. And all that stuff. I mean, and then all these other jokes here and there. And... But the the location, which is China, I mean, it looks spectacular. I mean, the way you see all the temples, you know, like the dim sun, uh, the mountains, uh, which had the avalanche that happened during the war. Uh, some impressive action scenes. Um, some nice special effects that they put into it. Um, great characters that they put into. Uh, and yeah, you know, they also the villages too that you can see here and there. So, oh no, I, I didn't think it was a bad film at all. I mean, despite what people say, yeah, because of the controversy going around. I, I, I think you should give this movie a chance. It's better than um, a few of the live-action adaptations that Disney's been shoving. The ones that made more money. But just, just watch it with an open mind. I mean, you'll be fine. I mean, therefore, it won't top the 1998 animated feature, which I'm about to review right now. Which in turn is based on the Chinese poem, The Ballad of Mulan. But at least they did everything they could to put it all together. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, though, was that originally they were going to do a live-action version before they went on to the one that they just got. Was that Zeng Zai from Project Tiger Hidden Dragon was going to portray the part of Mulan. And I thought that could have been interesting, too. And it was going to be directed by Chuck Russell. Yes, Chuck Russell, who did uh, The Mask and Eraser. It... They actually announced it uh, during the 2000s, I think at the time when when uh, Mulan, the, the 1998 the anime feature, was released on home video. Once again, joining in with the sequel, direct video And I'm like, well, I would have loved to see that, actually. But that never happened because it got cancelled. So they had to wait a couple more years until they announced it in 2015. And that's where we got now. Uh, anyway, so now I'm going to review the animated feature, what else, Mulan. This is the special edition to this set that I bought on DVD back in 2008 at Circuit City. Yeah, remember Circuit City, the electronic place that not only has all the appliances, you know, and all the other stuff that they got, but they also sell movies there too. Yeah, they sold DVDs, VHS tapes, laser discs. And uh, even the <laughs> Blu-rays um, and HD DVDs before it went out of business, called for bankruptcy in 2008, but it closed down in 2009. Though they did tend to revive it as a website only, but they they did try to find a way to bring it back. But I'm not so sure how that's turning out. Anyway. Um, they do have this on Blu-ray, just so you know, so they should port all the features. They probably add some new ones as well. 
I don't have that release, but I would love to get it someday if I could find it. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, this one has uh, deleted scenes. Uh, they had never before scenes that could have been included in the movie. They even have one song that would have been included by uh, actor um, Eddie Murphy. But the song was actually done by, interesting enough, Matthew Wilder. Yes, if you're familiar with uh, Matthew Wilder, he was the, the singer and songwriter who gave us the song Break My Stride from the 80s. Yeah, you know that song. Uh, never gonna gonna break my stride. Never gonna gonna slow me down. Oh no, I got to keep on moving. Yeah, that song. So he, he provided the music uh, for this movie. And it had music videos too, which features Jackie Chan. Yeah, you can see it on the back. Um, he did a, a music video for the song uh, I'll Make a Man Out of You uh, in Chinese or Cantonese or whatever. Which mostly because he did the voice of them in the, the Chinese versions uh, as Captain Li Shang. So that's really cool. And that should be included on the DVD. Uh, if you listen to the uh, the Mandarin uh, language track. Because they also have Spanish and French as well. Uh, yes, and plus this was digitally remastered at the time. So it looks even better than ever when watching it uh, on my Blu-ray player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also had a music video by Raven Simone. Um, which she sings her version of True of Your Heart. Which actually has the the music video by 98 Degrees and Stevie Wonder. Yeah. That's also included on the blue, on the DVD, sorry. <laughs> and also uh, Christina Aguilera's uh, Reflection. That's included too. Yeah, that was her version on when she sang it for the movie uh, before she sang her other version for the live action version. And there's also another one too uh, by a Spanish, uh, or at this rate, Brazilian singer named Lucero, which unfortunately was not mentioned on the DVD. I don't know why they didn't, but it was on this too. Um, and it actually features uh, Mulan's World, which shows you um, all the clips and and all the information that's that's being said by you know, Eddie Murphy himself playing the colorful dragon Mushu. Yeah, the comic relief and, and the wisecracking type. <laughs> I mean, no doubt. And it had uh, the Mulan fun facts, which it did explain about how uh, this was the first movie that was actually produced um, at uh, the Disney MGM Studios. They, they had an animation studio there, which is now known as Disney's Hollywood Studios in Bay Lake, Florida. Um, so they hired a team of animated, um, so they had an animation team to actually do their researching by going all the way to Belgium, China, as well as several locations to actually do a lot of researching and, and focusing on the culture, the people, um, the animals, the history, the setting, the locations they, that they spotted, like all these temples and villages, and they had to draw all of them together to make it exactly as exquisite and unique as possible. Try to stay true to the theme. And um, also they, they join in with the Burbank animation team as well. And they had to spend five years completing it. Yes, five years, which means they had to blend in with all the, all the traditional animation. Uh, they even got in the clean cut animation but they also blend in with some caps and um, some CGI animation blending in together so now it makes the movie look incredibly fresh impressive beautiful and wonderful and breathtaking than ever before like you've never seen it before Yeah. And of course, you know, it has an excellent soundtrack too to go with it and, and all. Not to mention the, the voice actors that 
led by a great cast, all excellent, like Mina Wen, who you may remember her as Chun Li in the in pretty much the I guess some would say it could be a guilty pleasure, but it did have a bit of a cult status, but it's not exactly a very good video game adaptation at all. It's pretty it's pretty lame too, called Street Fighter. Yeah, the one with Jean Claude Van Damme and and the late great Wild Julia. And you know what I'm talking about. Which also had uh, Kali Minogue in there too. Uh, but yeah, she played Chan she played Chun Li in that movie, but she went on to do um, a lot of great roles in, in her career. Like she went on to do uh, the movie uh, Push. Um, she also uh, did. Um, Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, but most of all, she provided the voice of Mulan, and this was the best performance she's ever done. Uh, but she's done a lot of great work. She, she was even in the TV show uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Uh, then, of course, Eddie Murphy, as I mentioned, uh, provided the voice as the wisecracking uh, Mushu. Uh, you got uh, Noble Yuki, Pat Morita, you know, from the Karate Kid, as well as Happy Days, uh, invited the voice of the Emperor. Um, B.D. Wong from Jurassic Park uh, provided the voice of Captain Lee Shang. Uh, the villain, Shang Yu, was voiced by the late great Miguel Ferrer. They even got Harvey Feinstein you know, from Mrs. Doubtfire and Torch Song Trilogy, among others. Yeah, he's a playwright, actor. The Yao, and you got George Taki from Star Trek. Uh, you got Moni Magoyas. Uh, you even got the late great uh, June Fourway, a legendary actress. Yeah, been voicing a lot of characters here and there. Um, among many others, um, they they really provided a very well, well told and good story. Uh, which the story itself is actually uh, very powerful and and very uh, and quite awesome too. It really is awesome. It's it's amazing. But they also blend in with comedy in there, and they and they did all this other stuff just to make it fun, like any other Disney film we had the, during the '90s. That's part of the Renaissance era. So this was perfect, yeah, and that's why I love this movie too. I wish I had seen it in theaters, though. I that was I totally blew it on that one because they actually played this movie at the Alex Theater in Glendale, which at that point on was already a performance arts theater. And apparently, my sister went to see it. I can't believe it. I I totally blew it because I was sort of busy that day. <clears throat> I just had to go out and do something, so. <clears throat> That's why I couldn't see it. <clears throat> but, on the other hand, I did get to see the film on home video when we got it on VHS back in 1999, so I had a chance to see this movie. And I really love it. I can't believe I blew it. <laughs> because I thought it looked so breathtaking. I thought it was hilarious. I thought the character was incredibly awesome. She really nailed the performance here. <clears throat> I mean, it is indeed the story about a young girl who is very adventurous, being chosen to become a matchmaker, but then soon uh, her father is being signed up for, for war to fight the, the army of the Huns that's won by Shen Yu. But because he was so weak, that Mulan was afraid that he might die. She disguises herself as a male. She stole her father's uh, helmet and armor and a sword. So now she's on her own with her horse and joining in with uh, the dragon and, and the cricket. So now they're on their way to join in with um, Captain Li Shang and the rest of, of his warriors. So first they start training and then they'll start fighting, you know, battling 
uh, Chen Yu's army. So that's what the story was about. So let's begin with the review. It stars uh, Mino Nguyen, Eddie Murphy, B.D. Wong, Miguel Ferrer, June Fourway, Harvey Feinstein, Jet Watanabe, uh, Jerry Tonto, James Hong, yes, James Hong, who was from the movie uh, Big Trouble in Little China, uh, The Golden Child, among many others he's done in his career. I always love that voice that he does. Soon Tech Gold, who was from uh, Billy Hills Ninja, uh, as well as um, A Missing in Action 2, yeah, the Chuck Norris film. Uh, Pat Morita from The Karate Kid, um, George Tacky from Star Trek, Miriam Bogolius, who was in the movie called uh, Ed and His Dead Mutter. Uh, but she went on to do other stuff in her career. Uh, Fred F. Forshane, James uh, Shagetta, Frank Welker, yeah, the Boy Scout himself, uh, Chris Sanders, Mary Kate Bergman, uh, joining in with Roger Bumpass, Bridget Stephen Horvitz, Kelly Chen, Coco Lee, Lee Kwong, and of course, Jackie Chan for the uh, Chinese versions. It's written by Rita Hasayo, Philip La Zepnik, Chris Saunders, uh, Regina Boswick Singer, and Raymond Singer. And it's directed by Barry Cook and Tony Bancroft. The movie begins in the imperial city of Han, China. We meet a villainous and ruthless Shang Yu who has a falcon companion that let an army called the Hans invade and breaching the Great Wall of China and the Chinese Emperor had ordered a general mobilization which joins in with Chi Fu to list a conception notice um, enlisting all of each man from all families to join the army. Uh, but meanwhile, at the village, we meet a young Chinese girl named Mulan, who's very adventurous, uh, very sweet. She has a dog named Little Brother. It's a puppy. Yeah, they go around chasing the chickens and all that stuff. Um, she also has a horse named Khan, and there's also a tiny cricket named Quickay. Uh, therefore, she's practicing uh, matchmaking because her mother um, told her to because that way she'll be able to find a husband someday to marry um, with help of uh, her grandmother, uh, Fa, and all. So yeah, she had to write all the notes to be memorized and she had to take in a bath, uh, get everything ready and clean, and you know, put some makeup on, on her face, so that way she can go straight to matchmaking class to meet the teacher who's very pompous to do exactly what she's told to do. You know, try to memorize all the notes and practice, you know, doing all these skills, especially like pouring the, the teapot gently into the teacup. Um, of course, the teacher actually uh, took her arm and was covered with ink and wants up putting it all over her face looking like a tortilla. <laughs> so of course Mulan accidentally spilled the uh, the teacup only to notice that Kukei was inside you know swimming and relaxing but the matchmaker teacher just takes out the cup was ready to drink it but Mulan tries to take the cup away from her until she spotted the the, the cricket that went inside her just as Mulan accidentally uh, spilled uh, tea over her dress and then later <laughs> suddenly she sits sat down onto uh, the fire and yes caught her uh, butt on fire uh, Mulan tries to stop it with her fan but then it just keeps getting worse and 
And then she splashes a tea over her face, which her makeup starts to run dry, and yet she failed. Then the soldiers had arrived and enlisted her father, Fao Zhao, because he's the only man in the family and an army veteran to join the fight. But unfortunately, Mulan is anxious and imprehensive due to his weakening health that he has. So you know by that point on he'll die before he'd be able to make it. So at that point on, Mulan took her father's old armor along with a helmet and his sword which she had to cut her own long hair and disguises herself as a man so she can be enlisted to the army on her own taking her horse uh, Khan with her and Kirk A just joins in while the family had noticed that she's gone and grandmother Fa had prayed for the ancestors inside the Guardian's Temple to appear and that's where we see uh, the leader of the Guardian uh, joining in with all the rest of the ancestors around and that's where they ordered a great stone dragon to protect Mulan's safety. At that point on they sent out a wise cracking small colorful dragon named Mushu yeah, he's red though he was a very disgraced uh, former guardian, but was chosen to awaken the stone dragon until he accidentally destroys it in the process. So now he had to disguise himself as it <laughs> before he's on his way to protect her. And that's when Mushu uh, finally meets Mulan, because Mulan was already working on it, you know, practicing how to become a man and all. So now they're on their way to the training camp, hoping things will go as smooth as possible. And that's where we meet um, all the warriors around that's led by Captain Lee Shane. Uh, unfortunately though, Mulan's uh, military skills are initially lacking completely. Um, she was given a name from Mushu called Ping. Um, given all the clumsy guidance um, based on the poor judgment and stereotypical views uh, to behave like a man. Um, so he has to join in under uh, Shang's command uh, along with her fellow recruits Yao, Ling, and Shin Po. So, of course, they gradually became trained warriors all together where you can hear the song I'll make a man out of you which was actually sung by Donny Osmond. Yeah, from the Osmonds. <laughs> yeah. Tony in with Mary Osmond. But it's Donny, though. Okay. So, for the course of a couple days, uh, Mulan had become successful. So she's getting better and better. Yeah, as Ping. Mushu suddenly creates a fake order from Shang's father, uh, General Lee ordering the Shane to follow the main emperor army into the mountains. Which at that point on, uh, yeah, because he made contact with uh, Shane Po. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, you know, they were already, uh, you know, washing off uh, into the river and you know, getting everything clean, which at this rate she was all alone until all, all the guys came in and she was very disgusted seeing all the naked men. <laughs> Oh, of course, because, you know, she smells like everyone else's. <laughs> After all, long, hard work. So, at that point on, um, what discovered to be a fake-out uh, turned out to be real, because that's when the when Li Shang uh, sent out all the reinforcements and the rest of the, of the training warriors to join in, you know, along with Mulan, um, just to find out what happened in the mountains and that's when they discovered that yes um, there were no survivors um, as it was already attacked by the Han's army that includes uh, Shang's father so they found uh, his uh, armor they found his helmet that's left somewhere in the snow 
and as well as taking his sword and just put it, um, yeah, taking the sword and just put it directly into the place, you know, just to be remembered by. And Mulan just found a Tao and just put it directly right next to it. So now they just continue to go on to find the army, but Mushu and Cricket accidentally shot the cannon. Yeah, it was the Heidelon Chachu cannon. Yeah, the ones that has uh, the picture of the one that had the dragon's head on there. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, so yeah, they had a bunch of cannons that they had to shoot once they spotted uh, the Hans' uh, invasion. And yeah, there were like tons of warriors ready to attack. They were shooting with arrows. Um, they brought their swords too, and they also shot their arrows as well. Um, Mulan decided to leave the attack to, to actually be able to take this one last cannon to actually shoot the, the tip of the mountain so that way it will create an avalanche and it will be able to bury the, several of the army crew all the way down. Yeah, it will bury them completely. But it gets into bigger trouble because it's also going to bury the Shanks army. Um, so at that rate, uh, Yao Ling, Chen Po, and the rest was uh, trying to help out the Mulan, along with Mushu and Krike, yes, and even the Khan, because they're she's about to save uh, Li Sheng and and everyone else. So now they finally defeated them. However, Mulan was wounded. Um, after the earlier uh, battle with uh, Shang Yu, who just took the sword and and, and slapped uh, and stabbed her, or sliced her, I believe, and that's where she was taken um, to get medical attention, and that's where we, and at that point on, we discovered her true identity uh, really quickly too. So now. Li Shang had went on his own, along with the rest, as they were shocked by uh, her dismay. So now she's all alone with Mushu, Khan, and Kuke, and I'm talking about, but just, just explain about what happened. And now they figured, well, they're going to go back home anyway, since they, she pretty much failed. However, she spotted uh, Shang Yu. And the rest of the Hans, they actually survived through the avalanche. And now, at the Emperor City, Mulan tries to convince Shane about Shane Yu's survival with no available at all. Uh, just when they're getting ready for a festival that's happening in the Emperor City, you know, joining them by the Emperor of China. So at that point on, the Huns capture the Emperor and seize the palace. With Mulan's help, Yao Ling and Ching Po have posed themselves as concubines and are able to enter the palace so that way they'll be able to go after all these guards and so that way they can get into uh, Shen Yu who just captures the Emperor and was ready to kill him too. It's not doing any of his commands. And Li Shang joined in too um, with Mulan just to stop him. Um, and little did we know, or at this point on, uh, Mulan with her plan, because I, I know she's been training a lot, yeah, such as um, where she actually taking those two medallions to actually climb all the way up to the poles. Well, this is exactly what they did. Uh, with Yeo, Ling, and Chin Po. <laughs> yeah, they just used the cloth to climb up to the poles to get into the palace. Um, but yes, um, Mushu, along with Kukei, uh just went all the way to, to the spot where they had all these Chinese fireworks, and that's where he had to take one <laughs> big uh, firecracker yeah, which is a rocket, and it actually shot all the way down, t all the way through 
Sheng Yu, and it went straight into the Chinese fireworks. Uh, Mulan and the rest just jumps out of the roof. It ran as, as she could and landed straight into Li Sheng, who just got beaten up you know, by Sheng Yu. And notice that the palace had been, well, a little destroyed. As Mulan has initially been reprimanded by the Emperor, we also learned that he shamed the army and her family, but since she also did destroy the palace too, but unexpectedly plays by himself by actually saving them all and it, of the city. So at that rate, um, she bowed for her unpresented honor and accepts a crest of the emperor and the sword of Shen Yu as gifts but she politely declines uh, the emperor's offer to be his advisor or this way he, want, he wanted to take uh, <laughs> uh, Chain Po's uh, job but at that point on she was asked to return to her family just to be able to to award her her excellence and also because she wanted to return home to give um, her father back his gifts which at this rate it's of course the sword and and the quest but then uh, Li Shane came back just to give Mulan the helmet and actually invited him for dinner to stay <laughs> But I know grandmother uh, father says, would you like to stay forever? <laughs> so that calls the celebration uh, with Mushu uh, joining in with the guardians. <laughs> and I know the chickens came round and, and all. So this was a very returning celebration for the entire family. So there you go. Uh, yes, um, this is indeed a breathtaking and wonderful story uh, of the Ballad of Mulan you know, based on a Chinese poem and it exec and it's very excellent too, very awesome um, the voice cast did an excellent job portraying the roles including Mi Na Wen who was born to do the voice of Mulan, in fact she's pretty much Mulan already <laughs> and She's indeed uh, very strong. I mean, even if she had some some mistakes here and there, I mean, she, she learns. I mean, she's she's very heroic, very noble, and best of all, she even gets to save a guy. So she doesn't have a bit of a a, cine, a Cinderella complex here and there. But hey, you know, this was also the same year we have Ever After a Cinderella story, where this, our Cinderella. Danielle shows that even though she has a lot of kindness and gentleness to others, she can also um, fight or even protect herself. And she's very strong and heroic and vulnerable too. Well, that's exactly what I saw uh, Mulan in the, in the movie. Um, I mean, she could definitely kick butt too. <laughs> Uh, Eddie Murphy, on the other hand, I mean, as wisecracking as he can be, I mean, he was just hilarious as Mushu. I mean, this uh, this performance alone definitely inspired by the movie The Golden Child, too, where he had his character become the chosen one, where that where he gets to go around to Tibet to not only save the Golden Child, but also because, well, he has to do all these tasks, and also to stop the bad guy. And try to grab uh, the dagger too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, um, his performance was so excellent that he went on to do the voice of Donkey in the Shrek films. This was a a true ins inspiration to this character because he also wise cracks in that movie too. So it's like, yeah, we got Mushu uh, in the Shrek movies. Yeah, I, I guess it had to be Chris Sanders who must have got the idea, or possibly one of the writers. Um, 
Um, yeah. Um, as well as all the rest of the excellent cast, like BD1, uh, did an excellent job too, uh, portraying uh, Lee Shane, which I know Jackie Chan did an awesome job too, portraying the role. Uh, Miguel Ferrer, doing the voice of the villainous uh, Shane Yu. Uh, June Fourway, who would, would be sadly missed, but was a legendary voice actress, uh, providing the voice, and she was perfect. Uh, Harvey Feinstein was just hilarious as Yao, you know, with the deeper voice and all. But he's always making all the punches, and he's the small one. I joined in with the rest of the other <laughs> uh, characters here and there. Um, James Hahn is also as wisecracking as he can be as Chin Fu, uh, yeah, Chi Fu. I mean, the way he speaks, you know. <laughs> but everyone else is great, I mean, no doubt. Uh, the animation, of course, is breathtaking as it could be. I mean, they combine them all together, all traditionally, and it definitely looks more fresher on the screen when, when I watched it. And it really blends so well. Lots of great action scenes here and there. Well, as much as it could. And I love the soundtrack, too. Uh, as I'm already uh, with the music provided by uh, Matthew Wilder, uh, the score was actually done by Jerry Goldsmith. Um, I actually created a, a rousing score that gives it a, a Western Chinese feel to it. As perfectly as possible. And you may rest in peace too. I'll Make a Man Out of You was excellent. Um, you Bring On It to Us All was beautiful. And of course, Reflections, yeah, which Christina Aguilera had sung. But it was also sung by uh, Leah Salonga for, for Mulan. So, yes, so she provided her singing voice for her. Um, also, Marty Nixon uh, provided the singing voice for Grandmother Fall. And joining in with all the rest of the groups, too. Even uh, Matthew Wilder, too, uh, provided the singing voice for Ling. <laughs> it was uh, provided by Jet Watanabe. And then we had the song, Who to Your Hearts, which had 98 Degrees, the boy band, uh, Nick Lackey, um, joining in with Stevie Wonder, a you know, legendary uh, singer who's blind. Uh, definitely works. Uh, it's also joining in with Raymond Simone doing her version. Yeah. And I think it's definitely right up there with all the Disney classics that we had for the, the Renaissance era. I mean, they must have took a hard time, you know, trying to put everything together, you know, based on the poem, and I can see how they really uh, managed to get right through it. But it definitely looks as real as it could be. Um, I love the shots of of the palace, the, the setting of, of China. I mean, I know they probably could have added maybe more of the the Chinese uh, words and letters you know through uh, the palace and the kingdom and all the rest but instead of being blank but that's okay but they did show the culture they did show everything that was provided I love the fight sequences you know with the army and between the Cheng's um, army and uh, the Hongs uh, during the the battle at the mountains that was perfect. Well done too, because they did use some computer-generated shots, and all these other um, training scenes too, like you know where they had to learn all these other skills. I mean, it's, most of which were very dangerous too, <laughs> like trying to run around where all these uh, cannons are shooting straight forward, or having to tippy toe into these uh, sticks right around the the river or the pond and or actually having to um, you know, use all these uh, sticks that they have to to hit and 
and train around. All, all that skills that they were doing. All, all the martial arts with the high kicks and the jumps. Everything. But they did tend to get some of the detail right, and I figured that's exactly what they were going for. But it works so well, it even plays almost like a fairy tale in, in a way. Uh, like an old Chinese fairy tale. I do wish the, the DVD that I just showed you earlier um, did have like a featurette uh, with the cast and crew, you know, lending their voices. And I do wish um, they did have the trailer included, even with the TV spots and all. I think it would have been even better for the to this set. Um, especially Blu-ray. It did have a sequel, as I mentioned before, uh, from 2004, but it came out in 2005. Um, well, not as good as the first movie, but it definitely... Uh, we get to see what happens next. Uh, with the characters. Um, I would definitely say it's a decent seat. Uh, therefore, uh, Mulan is a winner. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it was actually uh, the highest grossing film to come out that summer too. Uh, for its 90 million budget, it only made 304.3 million dollars. I mean, it didn't quite make as much as as I'll say, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid, or, or even The Beauty and the Beast. But it did outgross uh, two of the most underrated films to come out uh, two years uh, before, which was The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hercules. So. But it definitely did so well, as it seems. I'm glad the uh, that they worked so hard for it. And also, it did earn a Golden Globe and an Academy Award nomination, and also won several of the Annie Awards, too. But of course, they did win Best Animated Feature. Uh, um, but it's definitely historical, so that's why I love it. And that's why it became one of my, my sister's favorite film, too. And it's also her favorite character because she's not only strong but she's also athletic she's very sweet very kind so that's the movie Mulan the 1998 uh, animated feature and I give the movie five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye